For part four of our task, we're going to construct the following in the GDP tab. We're going to construct a distribution of the data with Excel, including each of the following in their own column. In other words, we're going to make a table. And we're going to use Excel formulas to calculate the values of that table. So we're going to have class limits and boundaries, class midpoints, frequencies, and class relative frequencies. All right, so let me go back to the table. And it occurred to me that I forgot to put the dollar signs for the last three things. So if, you, if you're interested in the units, you can put them there. Keep in mind, you also could have put those units, if I right click on this column and I insert, I could have put the units here instead, which would be a little bit more natural because they are in fact, let's face it, um, dollar signs tend to go in front. So you could delete them out of the back and put them in the front and that might make them fit better. You could also fiddle around with the format of the cells if you're interested. So if you right click and format cell, you can format it as a dollar amount um, by changing the category to dollars in here to currency like that if you so desire. So that's another way you can deal with it. So you can either have dollar signs in front, dollar signs with the date with the cell. Either way you like. The only thing that's weird is that variance won't work out because variance is dollars squared. But the other cells that are dollar amounts would be. Also remember count does not have a dollar sign because it's the count, it's just how many of them there are. Alright, so let's go over here to part four. I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to call it part four and then it was called GDP distribution. So I'm going to call it that. GDP distribution. All right, so I need to make a table. So I need to organize all of this. So I'm going to type class, and then I'm going to have, well, actually, this is going to be lower class limit. That's where we're going to start. All right, I don't like how small this is. So I'm going to, for one thing, highlight this whole area, because I think this is where my table is going to fit. I was going to, actually, I can just do columns H through O just for the sake of it. I'm going to click on this menu up here. I'm going to make it so that it's size 12 font. So it's a little bit larger. And then I'm going to double click on this lower class limit business or on, on column H. I'm going to make it wider. And you'll notice yet again, making that font size bigger messed around with my row size here. So I can double click there and make it so that row three is narrow. Everything looks pretty and nice. So I'm going to have my lower class limits right here. That's part of my table. All right. Well, the first class's lower class limit is zero. It's written in the instructions. It says have the first class lower class limit at zero. And then you use your rounded class width. OK, great. So I'm going to have my first class start at zero. That's done. The next class, if you remember what class width is, class width is the difference between lower class limits, consecutive lower class limits. So my next value will be equal to that value, 0, plus 1,000. Now you can do this one of two ways. You can just type 1,000 because I already have the value. But I could also be sneaky and I could use cell references. Well, I just type 1,000. That'll be easier for you guys. And then now you go to click on that cell and then you go to the bottom right corner and your cursor turns into a plus sign. You click on that plus sign and you drag it down the column. And now you have a whole bunch of rows. You want to make sure that your highest value, which is the maximum value of 19,588, for me, it'll be different for you, will be accommodated by the last row you've got. I went just far enough, look at that. So 19,000 to 19, or 19,588 is going to fit in this row right here. So I don't need the 20,000. 20,000 is a little too high. I don't have any countries that are higher than 20,000. So I'm going to delete that cell by just clicking the backspace button. So now I have all my lower class limits. Oh, there, it did it again keep fussing around with my column width and my column or my row height because I like it to look nice and neat. Now I'm going to move this cell, this column C smaller so that way I can see things a little better and then we can all see the lower class limits. So now I need the upper class limits right here 
and again it keeps fussing with me so I'm gonna make this a little bit wider and China my row 3 is now a little too um, narrow again so I'm going oops I'm gonna make that bold as well and then I go highlight the China row and make it smaller because it's driving me nuts there we go okay so now I need the upper class limits well think about what this this upper class limit, this first upper class limit, should be one less than the thousand. So the thousand is where the next class starts. So I should be one smaller than that. It should be 999. Or you could, if you want decimal places in there, you could say equals that cell H5 minus 0 0.01. That'll get you 999.99 if that helps you keep track of the decimal places. Okay, now the next upper class limit would be a thousand away for me because my class width is a thousand. So now to find the next class width or the next upper class limit, excuse me, I'm going to type equals, click on that 999.99 plus a thousand because that's my class width. Keep in mind it'll be different for you. One thousand will probably be the smallest class width for any year because 1960 was a long time ago. That gave me my new value of 1999. Okay, so now I click on that cell and I move my cursor to the bottom right corner and it turns into that plus sign, which is called the handle. I click it on it with my left mouse button and I drag down the column. I'm going to get all the way down to my last row, which for me is 19,000. And I'm going to lift up and all the values will be automatically filled in. Nice. Okay, so now what are the actual classes? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type class. Classes. So the classes are from this lower value to this upper value. And I'm sorry to say that there's no real good way to do this. You just type 0 to 99.99 and then 1,000 to 9 and so on. And modern Excel is so nice it actually kind of knows what I want to do and it just filled in the values for me. That is not always the case, especially in an older Excel. You might have to type for quite a bit. Also, there is an issue with formatting. Let me just show you real quick. Um, if I click right click on the cell and format, it knows that I want this as general. If it comes out really strange, you can change it to text because that's kind of what this is. It's sort of text. And the reason you might want to do that is because if you had a column that went, well, I don't know, um, 5 to 10, it thinks you want May 10th, which you don't. You want 5 to 10, so you have to change the format of the cell. It shouldn't be a problem for your project, though, because usually these values are so large that the calculator or Excel will never think that it's a year. All right, now again, my rows got all weird over here, so I'm going to fuss with my column width and my row height again. And I'm going to do that by going to the top left corner again. And for me, it's it shows it no matter where you are. If you scroll right or left, it always shows it in the top left corner. It's that downward arrow. And I click on it, and I'm just going to move my cursor between the rows again and between the columns again. And there we go. I'm still fussing with this lower class limit. It keeps wanting to make it smaller on me. It's annoying. I pressed a button accidentally. And that reminds me, I'm going to save can, by clicking on the little save icon. You always want to save a lot through the whole process. It doesn't like me on that row. All right, next. Well, I need the frequencies and the relative frequencies. So that'll be the next bit. So frequency, oh no, I need class midpoints. Class midpoint. I need frequencies and I need relative frequency. Let me make sure that accommodates everything for the this part. So let me go back to the project real quick. So it wants midpoints, frequencies, and relative frequencies. Okay, so that's what we'll have right here. All right, now the midpoint is the middle of the entire range from 0 to 999.999999 forever, repeating forever. Now, that's you can't do that because you can't type 9s for the rest of your life. So the way to find it mathematically is to find the average of those consecutive lower caste limits. In other words, you add them up and divide by 2. So you take 0, 
this cell right here, which for me is H4, plus which this cell, which for me is H5. I add them up in parentheses, because I want the computer to add them, and then divide by 2. Enter. And that gets me my first midpoint. That's one way you can find it. Another way you can find it with Excel is actually taking the, the command average and telling it to find the average of those two cells, H4 and H5, because that'll be the mean. That'll add them up and divide by 2. So whichever way you want to use it, either use typing the formula or by using the average formula, whichever one makes you happy. Just make sure you, if you're going to type the formula longhand, use parentheses in there. That got you the first class midpoint. But remember, all the remaining class midpoints should be this width away from 500. That class width, that rounded class width that we found down here in part 10 can get used to find all the other midpoints. Okay, so to do that we type equals and click on this cell that had the first class midpoint and I'm going to add to it my class width. Now every problem is going to have a different class width, but my class width is 1000. So I press enter and then I click up on that formula and then I move my cursor to the bottom right handle and I drag down to the bottom row and I lift up and it finds all the midpoints for me. The reason it's working that way, by the way, is because I used a cell reference, because I used this K4 plus 1000. That's what's making it work so nicely for me, right? If you had to sit there and type the formula every time for every set, that would get really tedious. But I know that the width should always be consistent from midpoint to midpoint, from lower class limit to lower class limit, upper class limit to upper class limit. All these numbers should be 1000 apart for me, because 1000 is my class width. It'll be however far it apart is for your problem. All right, now I need the frequencies. Now here's where some work is involved, because the best way to do this is to count. Oh, not with a formula, but to actually physically count. You have to count how many would fall in this class from 0 to up to 1,000, but not including 1,000, so 999. Now, there is a way to kind of have Excel help you a little bit. So if you click on the first cell and you recognize that that's between 0 and 1,000 and you hold down and scroll down all the way until you get up to 1,000 but not including it or whatever your value is. My value is at 1,000. Your value might be at you know 700, then stop at 700. So I've got all those cells highlighted, but in the bottom right corner, it actually tells you in Excel the count. It says the average of those values, which I don't care about. Then it says the count of those values. It says 49. That means that there are 49 values that I've highlighted. So then I know that my first frequency is actually 49. Now i got to go do it again, but for me it's 1,000 to 1999. So I'm going to go down here and scroll down. My first value that's bigger than 1,000 is right here at Hungary for me. I'm going to keep going until I get up to 1999, but not past it. And I can see that there's 16 countries there. So I'm going to go back up to the top and type 16. And you're going to continue in this manner all the way through to the very end. Now, if you have country or a region that has no countries in it, then you're just going to type a zero. You don't put blanks in, you put zeros in. So there's only four countries in the 2000s. And there's five countries in the 3000s. So for me, we put four, five, and then we go back down. And this is tedious, but that's what you have to do, right, To in order to be able to find this. There's one there, four there. Oh, exactly what I wanted to see. There's nobody in the 6000s for me. So I'm going to type one for the 4000s, four for the 5000s, zero for the 6000s, and then five again for the 7000s. So let me go type that. It went 1, 4, 0, 5. All right, let me go get the rest of these columns, and I'll be right back. There, I have the rest of them typed in. Now, at this point, you need to double-check yourself. You need to make sure that you've accommodated for all the countries. So I'm going to type equals at the bottom of this column, below all these frequencies. I'm going to type equals sum, parentheses, and I'm going to find the sum of this column enter. And I get 96, right? So I'm going to type over here, sum. 
that should match the count that I said right here. If it doesn't, then you need to go back and then recount. These two values should be the same. Right? The count here, which is how many countries there are, and the sum of the frequencies should be the same value. All right, now we just need to find relative frequency and we're done. All right, so there's the relative frequency. And to do this, we needed that sum value. So I've got to scroll out a little bit so you guys can see. One second. There we go. Okay, so... Whoop. Sorry, I went too far. All right, so to find this, what you want to do is you want to have it divide. So you want to type equals 49 divided by my total. Now, I found my total down here, which is the sum of those um, frequencies. Now, here's the thing. I want it to stay consistent. I want that denominator to never change. If I go right now, if I click on this formula and I drag it down, it's going to give me errors. And the reason is because it's going to take L5, but divide it by the value that's down below, which is a big fat zero, because there's nothing in it below that cell. Now, the way to get around this with Excel is to go back up here to the original formula. Instead of typing L24, you type dollar sign L dollar sign 24. Now that's what it was for me. That's where my total is. My total was in cell L or column L row 24. Now it might vary for you, so pay attention to where your table has its sum value that you found. Right? You could also use the count value over here, which for me is in cell F5. Right? That would also work. But either way, you have to give it dollar sign. A dollar sign in front of the letter a dollar sign in front of the row number. And what that means is don't ever change that value. Change the top number, change L4. So let me click on this and let me drag this down. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the bottom. Not to the 96, but to that last value. And I lift up and it found it because what it did is it takes the next value down that column, the next frequency, and it keeps dividing it by that same cell, L24. It's called a fixed reference. It never changes the reference value. So it makes it so that no matter what, it was dividing by L24. If we did this right, then the sum of these values should be equal to 1. And I can find that by dragging my sum formula over 1. I just clicked on the 96 or whatever it is for you, move to the bottom right corner and drag it to the right and you should get one by the time you're done. If you don't, then you've done something wrong. All right, we've now built our table. I just want to clean this up just a touch before I leave this. I want to highlight the table portion, the table, not the title and not the sums. And I want to center everything because I like it all nice and centered. And then I'm going to put a box around everything. So I'm going to go up here to the top or to the borders menu, which is right here below where it says Arial for me. I'm going to click on this and you can do all sorts of things, but I'm just going to click all borders and then it looks like a table. Technically, if you wanted to, you could go around and box all your answers. You could go up here and say, hey, put a big border, put a box around all of this. And now it's really clear that that's part three and this is part four over here. All done. All right, I'll see you back here for part five. Oh, real quick before I go, one other thing you can do if you want this part four label centered, you can highlight all those cells and click merge and center. That'll unmerge it and then remerge it, merge and center. And there it is, nice and centered. And this is all now one cell, but that's only if you so desire.